Right, are we all sitting comfortably? Woo! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's <laughs> a raucous audience here today. Yeah, righty ho. I'm going to uh, read you a little bit of my upcoming novella, which is out on the 30th of April. It's called Antisocial Housing, and it's from Nordic Press. If you scan that little code down the bottom, it'll take you straight to the Amazon pre-order link for it. Um, yeah. So basically, I'm just going to read the first chapter, and it should give you a pretty good indication of the book. The television screen flickered with garish light as the mouths of the identikit presenters went up and down like immaculately airbrushed puppets. Mike had completely lost track of what was going on. When he started watching it, it had been something sufferific about moderately wealthy people buying houses in moderately expensive areas. Now, it appeared to be inept pseudo-celebrities trying to wash dogs or shear sheep or something. Why he bothered playing for the TV license was a mystery. In the end, it didn't matter what was on. All that Mike could hear was the awful gurgling in the pipes. He had tried turning up the volume, but all that succeeded in doing was to provoke the cantankerous old woman in the flat next door to fly into one of her frequent sub-psychotic rages. She had wailed like a banshee and threatened to report him to the council. Mike had meekly gone along with it and turned it back down. The last thing he needed in his forties was an asbo. In the end, he turned the sound off and made the vacuous dialogue up in his head. Current events had conspired to put a massive rotten cherry on top of the newly constructed low rise flats myriad problems. Along with the inevitable gaps around the windows, doors that didn't shut properly, and lifts that were seemingly possessed by the devil, it looked suspiciously as though the contractors had cut material costs by constructing the walls entirely out of cardboard, and thin cardboard at that. And then there were the pipes. For the first few weeks, after he moved into his current abode, everything was peachy. The toilet flushed, and the taps ran with clean water. The drains were fast and didn't reek. Everything worked as it should and nothing was in disrepair. That all changed after a localised earth tremor sent the plumbing in the building completely out of whack. For over a month now, the toilet had been regularly backed up, the taps sputtered, the drains stank. To top it all off, there was an around-the-clock din that sounded like an industrial band was recording an experimental album in the water tank. Mike sighed and took the last bite of his microwaved beef burger. It tasted vaguely of plastic, but he'd gotten used to it. He hadn't been one for cooking since his wife walked out out on him a year ago. Since that fateful day, he had spent his downtime sitting on his backside, stuffing his face with crisps. It had gone to the point where he could tell the difference between brands without even glancing at the packet. It was a sorry state of affairs. A sharp pinging noise announced that Mike had an email. He groaned as he leaned over and retrieved his laptop from the coffee table. Finally, some good news. The council had replied to his cheesed off email and were sending their best man to look at the plumbing tomorrow. It probably wouldn't do any good, he never did, but he lived in hope, no matter how vague that hope may be. His recent diet of junk food and supermarket lager had seen his waistline expand at an alarming rate. He didn't so much have a six-pack as a whole barrel. Getting out of his reclining chair and to his feet took far more effort than it ever should. He grunted involuntarily as he bent over and gathered up the detritus of his most recent binge. He was never quite sure whether it was depression or simple bone idleness that kept him away from the gym, but whatever it was, it was doing a fine job. Laziness one, willpower nil. Screwing up the various wrappers and aluminium cans, Mike shuffled to the postage stamp sized kitchen and stuffed them into his overflowing bin. It was well overdue empty and he just knew that the thin plastic liner was going to split. Mike sighed again. That was a problem for another day. There was no way he was putting any clothes on and going outside. He was perfectly happy in his tatty boxer shorts and stained grey t-shirt, thank you very much. After opening the fridge door, Mike moved aside a sad-looking lettuce and retrieved another beer. He was getting low again. 
This meant he would have to brave the horrors of shopping tomorrow. Yet another sigh escaped his lips, as he wondered if life could get any more depressing. It was as though some great cosmic force was having a damn good laugh at his expense. Mike cracked open the can and grabbed his glass. He was onto the really cheap stuff now and needed to rinse it out. The combination of crap and not so crap lagers created a surprisingly horrible concoction that he tried his best to avoid. The froth always went funny and clung to the rim of the glass like scum on a pond. He twisted the tap, but nothing came out. Turned it back off and tried again. Nothing. Losing his patience, Mike slapped the moulded plastic grip with the flat of his palm. A thick gob of foul-smelling goop spat into the stainless steel sink. It was black and foul with a strange iridescence that gave it an oily texture. What the hell? Mike barked in surprise. He leaned in for a closer look. He was trembling almost imperceptibly, but it, if it wasn't so crazy, he could have sworn that it reacted to his shadow. The last thing on earth he wanted to do at that moment was to touch the hideous substance that just spat from his tap, but he couldn't just leave it in the sink. For a start, the overpowering stench was making his eyes water. Mike wadded up the length of kitchen towel and pressed it down on the filth. It was springy, bouncy, almost jelly-like, reminded him of the centre of a Jaffa cake. He dragged it towards the plug hole and was shocked to see that it left a thick, sticky trail. As he lifted the towel to go back and erase its track, the glob slurped back to its starting position like it hadn't moved at all. Eh? Mike had never encountered anything so bizarre in all his life. Get down the damn plug hole! He swore under his breath as he tried again with the same infuriating results. Mike growled in the back of his throat and took a swig of beer directly from the can. He wiped his mouth with the back of his hand and tried once more. This time, he had another wad of paper ready and wiped its trail along with it. Gotcha! He bellowed in triumph as he lifted the bunched up tissue and saw that it was finally gone. As he swigged his beer in celebration, a disgusting gurgle directed his bloodshot eyes to the hole. He slammed the can down and turned the tap again. This time it worked, eventually. After an unsettling chugging sound, icy cold water gushed into the shallow sink. It splat slashed up at Mike, soaking his t-shirt. Bought! Bloody perfect! Can life be any more fucking annoying? As if to answer his question, the stream of clear water gradually turned a rusty reddish brown. It had a distinctly metallic odour to it as it raced towards the plug, plug hole. Whoosh! A filthy tongue of strange material burst from the hole. Mike screamed in horror as it rose into the air in front of his face. It was comprised of the same gelid substance as the mystery glob. It throbbed and vibrated as it lengthened, stretched, then sharpened to a needle-like point. <clears throat> the ooze punctured his eyeball and slammed into his brain. Mike bellowed in agony as his brain was liquefied. The substance was corrosive. It burned like concentrated acid. In seconds, his skull had melted and collapsed in upon itself. Mike's hands went into spasm. The beer can was crushed in his grip. Beer squirted out and splashed all over the walls and floors. His fingers twisted the can, ripping it open. As the fluid continued to dissolve his head, blood poured from his now lacerated hand. Down his neck it surged, stripping the flesh and melting the sinew. It coursed around his body, consuming his organs and sucking every drop of nutrient from his bones. The monstrous fluid reached Mike's toes in seconds. The skin around his nails split as vile black protoplasm burst forth. It gathered in a growing pool at his feet before surging up the outside of his body. In seconds, Mike had been completely consumed, clothes and all. The quivering mass of pulsating matter lengthened, sunk in upon itself, trembled, then shot back down the plug hole. All trace of Mike had been devoured. The steady drip, drip, drip of the tap and the mangled beer can were the only indication that anything untoward had happened. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, like I say, if you want to know what happens, you'll have to buy a copy. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>